Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on debugging and the Compose action in Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. So we'll begin by explaining the example we're going to work with, which is showing the details of any file selected in SharePoint. We'll set up SharePoint in OneDrive, that won't take long. And then I'll explain about the importance of choosing the right environment. That's got an exclamation mark at the end because it's so important for this tutorial. We'll look at creating the SharePoint trigger to make our flow run, adding a compose action to bring the information together, and then writing it out to a text file. We'll then run the example flow by selecting a file in SharePoint. And then we'll look at debugging, which isn't strictly possible, hence the quotation marks in Power Automate, but we'll see how you can get around that. And finally, I thought it'd be useful to see what flow failures look like, just so you can see life isn't always a series of green ticks. But that's enough of me. I'm going to hand over to my alter ego now. And let's get started. So this is what this tutorial will show you how to do. I'll show you how to create a very simple SharePoint site. That won't take a second. And then you'll be able to click on the three dots to the right of any file and choose the automate option from the menu which appears and choose to run a Power Automate flow we'll create. What that Power Automate flow will do is to take the SharePoint trigger for a selected file, compose a message consisting of the file name and the username, and create a file, a text file in OneDrive in the debuggy stuff folder. And that will go in this folder. I can actually show this working, I think. So let's uh, choose that to run that flow. And what it will do is come up with a message saying, do I want to run my flow? I do. It should now have created the file. So if we go to the debuggy stuff folder and refresh this, you should see a text file appearing there with a bit of luck. And if I click on, if I click on that, you'll see the output from it. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So the first thing I'll do is to create a site in SharePoint. So I'll go into SharePoint. I will click on the button to create a site when it appears. I will type in my choose a team site and I will call my team site uh, Power Automate Video Tutorial. Click on next. I'll add a couple of people to my site and then choose finish. And that's how you can create a site in SharePoint. Almost certainly you've already got one set up for yourself. What we'll then do is go to documents on the left hand side here. Click on that. Choose to add a new document. I'm going to add an Excel workbook and I'll call it something like list of recipes when this appears. And that's what I will then be able to detect. Click on and then close that down. It's automatically saved it. And if I refresh this window, you should see the file name changes. But at the moment, when I click on the three dots to the right of that and choose automate, no flow appears. And that's because in between showing you the last one, I've deleted my flow. To set up OneDrive, what we'll do is just add a new folder. So I've clicked to go to my documents on the left hand side. I've chosen to create a new folder and I'll call my new folder debuggy stuff because it's a nice professional name. And it's that folder which will contain the text file. And we're all ready to go with our example now. So please don't miss out this section of the tutorial, otherwise you're facing certain disappointment. I've already done this once. I've created this flow called show details of selected file, and I was all set then to assign it to my files in SharePoint. So enthusiastically, I clicked on three dots and chose automate and was disappointed to see that the flow didn't show up. And I spent quite some time trying to resolve this. The solution, it turns out, is this. So this is a page from Microsoft on known issues and limitations. Always makes your heart sink at heading like that. And it says here, for flows that use the four selected file trigger in SharePoint, only those that are part of the default environment in Power Automate are listed within the SharePoint Automate menu. And what that means is this is never going to work. And the reason is I created my flow in the uh, private environment and not the default one. So what I needed to do and need to do now, and you need to do too, is to switch to your default environment in order for your flow to show up. 
So please, please do that so that you don't share my pain. So I think we're good to go. We've got OneDrive set up, we've got SharePoint set up, and crucially, we've made sure that we've got the correct environment, the default one. So we can now create a flow. So if you click on Create, and if you choose to create an automated cloud flow, if you then click on Skip, and we'll rename the flow here. I think in an earlier tutorial, I inadvertently suggested you could type in a name and then click on Skip, and it would retain the name. That's not actually the case. So what I can now do is to choose my trigger. So I can choose, I'm going to type in SharePoint up in my search box and show my SharePoint triggers. And what I want to do is when a file is have the trigger run when a file is selected, not when an item is selected, when a file is selected. You can then choose your SharePoint site. So I can click on this drop arrow and choose my SharePoint site. Now, this is tricky. You may well find that if you're following along these instructions, nothing appears in that drop list if you've only just created your SharePoint site. And if that's the case, what I would do is choose to enter a custom value and paste in the part of the URL which gives you your SharePoint site. I've got it selected there. And that will work perfectly. There seems to be a very slow refresh rate on this. What's also confusing is that this first one, Power Automate Tutorial, is a site that I created in SharePoint and then immediately deleted, but it still pops up in the list, and as far as I can tell, will keep popping up for time immemorial. So there doesn't seem to be any way to get rid of that. So I'm going to choose the site we created just now, PowerPoint, Power Automate Video Tutorial, and I'll choose the library in which I want this to apply, which is the documents. So that will do for my trigger. What I can now do is say what happens when the trigger is, is realized, when it's actuated. So the next thing we're going to do is create an action. And I'm going to type in the word compose into the search box and choose a compose action. This is probably one of the most common actions you'll choose in Power Automate. What it will do is consolidate information together. So I'll put in the file name and I'll choose a dynamic content to give the file name, which has been made available by the trigger. And I'll also show my username, which was available anyway, universally available. Just a word on how this is happening and a glimpse into the future. If you let your mouse linger over the file name, you can see it contains a complicated expression. Now, what I could have done if I wanted is type in that expression. So I'll just give you an idea of how this would work. Um, there's possibly no need to do this. I could have gone to my expression box, typed in trigger body, and then typed in a question mark, the purpose of which I may come to late in this tutorial. I could then choose to refer to the entity, which is the flow running this, and then another of these mysterious question marks, and then I could pick up on one of the fields available to me. You'll notice I'm having to type everything in in the right case, and get the punctuation the letters exactly right. And if I choose OK, you can see that it goes pink to show it's an expression and not dynamic content. But if you let your mouse linger over the two expressions, they should, if I've typed it correctly, be identical. So that's an idea of what the Compose expression is doing. It's actually just picking up information from the trigger and displaying it. So I can now save that. And we're ready to go on, perhaps, to create the text file. So the last action in this flow will be to write this information I've created out to a text file. So to do that, I'll choose to create a new step. The text file is going to be in OneDrive. So I'll search OneDrive for business actions and I'll create a file. The folder path, if I click on this little icon on the right hand side, will be in my newly created folder called Debuggy Stuff. And the file name I'll call output.txt. As to the file content, what it would do is pick up on the output from the previous compose action and display that in text format. And this is a very common thing to do. Use a compose action to consolidate information into the right format, and then you output it to some something like a text file. So that's my create file action. I can now save that again, and we can try running the, the um, flow. So to run our flow, one thing you can't do is test it. Because it's triggered by something which goes on in SharePoint, 
until you've created one run of the flow, you can't then choose automatically to rerun that to see what happens a second time. So instead, what I'm going to have to do is go to SharePoint, click on the three dots next to a file and choose automate and choose to run my flow, but it's not appearing in the list. So what I'll do now is try refreshing my screen. And with a bit of luck, when I come back to this, it will have picked up on the fact that a power automate flow has been created. You'll see it's not now displaying anything. So I'm going to go back to my documents. And now when I choose automate, you can see my rule is appearing. And that's fairly typical behavior. If you can't see something in Power Automate or indeed in the cloud, refresh your website and with a bit of luck, it will appear. So what I can now do is to run that flow. Now, after a short pause, it will check on my permissions. I'm using SharePoint and OneDrive. I can continue and I can run my flow. And with a bit of luck, that has now created the file. So let's see if it's actually there. If I go into OneDrive and if I go to my folders and look at my debuggy stuff, you can see my output text file is there. And if I click on it, it will show that it's printed out the name of the file and my username. So it's all good. Now, what I could do now is go back to my original flow and I could run it using the test facility. So I can click on the test button and you can see now the automatically option is available. And if I choose that, I can choose with a recently used trigger and I can choose it. basically what it will do is list out all the previous occasions of which, which I've run this using a trigger. I can choose one of them and test it out. And what this will do is rerun my flow. And I think what it will then do, well, I'm not absolutely certain about this. So I'm going to have to refresh the, this is it will overwrite the previous text file. It has. So that's now a new instance of it, although the information it contains will obviously be identical. So how do you debug in Power Automate? I've gone back to my list of flows just to make sure I start again with a fresh run of this. And what I'm going to do is click on the uh, pencil next to the flow and choose to edit it. I'm going to click on the test button, choose automatically and choose one of my most recent flows. I may have slipped in a third flow while I wasn't recording. So choose any one of these and choose to test it and your flow will run. So I've got green ticks next to each of the actions. I asked the question, how do you debug in Power Automate? And the honest answer is you don't. There's no step-by-step -step, um, debugging tool, as there is in many other programming languages. But instead, what you can do is click on each of these um, triggers or actions to see what it takes in and what it spits out. So if I click on the trigger at the top, you can see the inputs into the trigger, which I neither understand or I'm very interested in, and what it spits out. And there's two ways to look at this. There's a neat, tidy way, which is to click on where it says show more. And you can see the information in a more easily understandable format with the header information, which goes on for ages. And presumably somewhere at the bottom, the actual uh, fields it spits out. Or you can do what I tend to do, which is to click on the raw outputs to see the information in the real underlying JSON format. Are you going to really have to do this? I'm afraid so sometimes. So there's all the header information. And down at the bottom here is the body information. And that contains the things which this trigger makes available for further use. You can see the word entity appearing there. That's what I had to refer to in the expression which I typed in. And you can see it exposes four properties, the ID, the item URL, the file name, which is what we picked up on, and the file ID. And you can do this with any trigger or action. So I could go to my compose action and I could see the inputs and the outputs for that. And I could do the same thing with my create file at the bottom. So you learn after a while to be able to inspect these inputs and outputs to see whether things are working successfully. But that's the best help I can give you on debugging at the moment. So what I want to do for the last part of this tutorial is show you what a flow with an, with an area in looks like. So we need to generate one. I've gone back to my list of flows. I'm going to click on the three dots next to the one I created and choose Save As. And I'll call it Show Details of SharePoint File on Selection with Checkout. And you'll see why in a second. And then save that. It takes a normally long time not sometimes to save flows, but that was quite quick. I can click on the three dots and I can choose to turn this back on. Because when you create a copy of a flow, it automatically disables it by default. And then I can click on the Pencil tool to go into editing my flow. 
And what I'm going to do is add in action that having uh, triggered something by selecting file in SharePoint, I'll check out the file. So I'll click on the plus by hovering over the arrow, joining the two actions together. I'll add an action and the action will be to check out a file. That's the one I want, check out a file in SharePoint. And what I need to do is say which the file is. So I need to choose which website it is. All the same caveat supplies I said earlier. I need to choose the library within that, which by default is documents. And I need to choose the file ID. How do you know the file ID? It's made available to you by the previous trigger. So I can click on the file identifier, which is a unique uh, string of digits and letters, I'm sure, generated by um, Power Automate. And that will pick up on which file has just been selected and check it out. So I can now save that and try running it. And you may be able to get an inkling of what's going to go wrong. So the first time I run it, I choose it's a wrong flow. I just need to cancel out of that. Um, you can see that it wasn't actually listing the flow I've just created. That was the old one. So what I need to do is I need to refresh my page. What I can now do is click on my three dots, choose automate and choose to run my with checkout flow. And it should work perfectly the first time it will check it out. So if I now click on continue and run my flow, what will happen is it will run it and it will check it out. If I now refresh this page again, you can see a little checkout symbol appear. There it is next to my flow. And that's because the item is now checked out for editing. So if I now run this flow a second time, what will happen is it will try to check out the file. You can't check out the file which is already checked out in SharePoint and it will crash. And I'll be then be able to see that back in Power Automate. So run my flow, go back to Power Automate, click on the test button. Have a look at my recent triggers and you can see the first one succeeded, but the second one failed. And if I try running that again, you'll see what a failing flow looks like. You can see you get a red exclamation mark. I'll just highlight that next to the step which failed. And then you could, if you like, click on the heading of that to interrogate it more. And just to complete this, I'll just go back to SharePoint and uncheck out this so I can hover over that and it says I can either check it in or discard my checkout. I'm going to discard my checkout because I didn't make any changes to it and the red tick will disappear and I'll be able to run my flow again. So that's how errors appear in Power Automate flows.